Hi all, welcome to the webinar. We'll just give it another minute before we start properly, but thanks for joining us. And we'll start, up. in fact, I think we're at one. So just checking that, let's have a look. Right, we're presenting people. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us um, for this webinar around all things inventory. Um, I'm Andrew Garvey and I'm joined by Simon Williams and Dave Joyce. Um, Simon, I'll hand over to you for you to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Simon Woodhams, um, Morkington Smith. Um, I head up our software advisory team here. So we deal with anything that your business requires from a software accounting software perspective. So it could be your accounting system, stock system, reporting platforms, all of the above. Um, and yeah, from your day-to-day -day stuff. So, no, lots of knowledge there, Simon. Thanks for that. Exactly. And, and, and Dave? Yeah, hi guys. I'm Dave Joyce from Big Red Cloud. Um, I'm the creator of Turbo Inventory, which, which Big Red Cloud uh, acquired last year, um, expert in the kind of inventory ERP market and um, looking after pretty much Anthem with a physical product. We, we can track it and trace it and stuff. Um, so, yeah, just from, from, from that inventory side. Fantastic. So, yeah, lots of, lots of experience. I'm, I'm Andrew, Andrew Garvey, as I say. I've worked in the so accounting software space for the last 15 years, worked with lots of accountants and clients. So I'll be hosting today, but the experts are David and Simon. One thing I would say is, you know, please please feel free to add your questions in the chat. I think it's really important that this is dynamic. Um, I'll I'll sort of keep keep uh, proceedings moving with some questions, but the most valuable bit today is if you want to ask any questions that are relevant to you, we can answer them either as we go along or at the end of the webinar. So on that note, let's dive into it. Okay, so um, it's a bit of a generic question to start us off. But what are, the, in your experiences, what are the most common challenges that businesses face in terms of inventory management today? Um, Simon, I started with you for the intro, so I'll start with you, Dave, for, for this one. Oh, great. I thought you were actually going to start with Simon. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, look, as, as we mentioned before we even popped into the call, like it, the, the challenges aren't really changing. Um, it, it, it's the same thing that if we were doing this five, six years ago, we'd be talking about you got it's not it's not even just the making sure you've got the right product at the right time but do you have the store for that product um do you do you, do you know what what your demand is um um and 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 just 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 the usual things get getting it in at an affordable cost so that you'll be able to get it out to your client i think more, more than anything uh the, the same challenges are there that everyone is having it's just that the 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 introduction of e-commerce stores and everything have just exasperated it um, because the, dealing with some and and I'm seeing it across the board, not not just one or two lo, site lo, person locations, but actually major warehouses where they're selling online, they're selling physically, and they're just they're they're not the whole lot's not synced up, and they're having to cancel orders to customers and 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 all that because they just don't have the stock there. They didn't have enough on hand. Their, their demand wasn't ready. So it's just almost same same issues, just in a new flavor. Yeah. I think I think that's as you say that's what we were discussing before we sort of came joined the webinar. And Simon, from from your perspective, obviously you've got to sync all of the back back office systems together. Inventory, yeah. you know, you're touching physical products and moving them around isn't isn't easy depending on how many you've got. Is that what, what would you add to that? Yeah, I mean the things that we see a lot of, especially from a accounting side, is that people just do this at the end of each month and put a value in their in their accounts. Um, there's no physical stock value. The stock's not tracking through. As you said, you know, we've got, you know, lots of e-commerce sites and they're not synced up or they're, they go into another platform that doesn't then push it to the accounting platform and it all doesn't push back even. So, you know, the big thing that we always look at is having that real time information in your accounts. Cause how can you run your business if you don't know what your figures are saying at the right time? Um, so yeah, I mean, we've seen lots of, you know, you might have something on the balance sheet and not in your profit and loss, which is mad. Um, so your profits are always, well, reporting wrong. Um, so that's what we try to solve um, from that side. And that's our biggest challenge is under getting the business to understand, yes, you might have a stock system, but it needs to call to your accounting platform. And mm -hmm. your stock system needs to connect, as David said, to all of your, you might, as you said, e-commerce sites and, your physical stock and your storefronts and your market store and all that sort of thing, they all need to integrate together. You can't have lots of different ones that eventually somewhere along the line, someone does some Excel. Um, I think, I think, I think that makes sense. And I think, you know, David, you mentioned, you touched on e-commerce. I think a lot more transactions are happening digitally now and, and actually with third parties also often fulfilling some of these, 
um, some of these orders. So having having that sort of single pane of glass, as you say, to to keep everything in one place is is vital. And I, I think increasing what what I'm seeing across the, across the world is some of these processes that worked perfectly well maybe five ten years ago, which were paper based, Excel based, all that yeah. kind of, and, and and sometimes we just existed in someone's head. It's increasingly difficult because the speed at which inventory is being moved now be, and, and lack of contact with that inventory is is, is impacting that. And all the new e-commerce sites that are coming on, like like five five years ago, you probably you probably had your Shopify store or your WooCommerce store. And today now it's like, oh, now I'm on TikTok because that's where my customers is and I'm selling there and and I'm on Timu and I'm on Amazon and and the marketplace for Facebook. All, all of a sudden you're gone from one e-commerce channel that you had proper control of and you're running with 20 more and you don't know where the orders are coming in from. You're not sure even where your marketing spend is. Um, so it's just all a little bit of a panic. I think I think that's def- definitely um, something I've noticed. I've spoken to a few, spoken to a few, you know, customers and and accountants, and they they're all sort of they've all they all seem to have these cu- these customers and businesses they know that have grown exponentially. Things like TikTok in particular, yeah, you know, the growth is is exponential. So you've gone from being a relatively small business to to quite a large business in an exceptionally quick period of time, and that's where I think the challenges are, a, a, a lot of businesses are facing are coming from is just the speed of you know if you if you're hitting a model that works. The speed at which you can scale up is, is probably way way faster than than you could have done a few years ago. So keeping up with that is difficult. And also, like you, we obviously with the burst of e-commerce, you're not just selling locally anymore. You're selling potentially worldwide, which opens up a whole other <laughs> accounting issue of VAT and all, which you're not going to touch on. But you know, it's <laughs> enabling businesses to now send, and especially if you're not fulfilling it yourselves, if you're using yeah. Amazon or whoever to fulfill it. And you're just shipping all their stuff to their warehouse. Anyone in the world could potentially buy that, and there is that whole import, export, VAT, all of that sort of stuff that you then have to deal with as well. So, so I, su- I suppose that you know, just distilling that down and, and and making it so simple to understand the challenge, inventory challenges are probably the same as business ch- challenges generally, which are you've got far more channels to manage now. Everything is far more. Uh, digitized to speed is really important and it is difficult it, it, it's almost impossible to keep a manual process going now for a business at any kind of scale whereas you know we've all we've all worked in and I, I still use the occasional spreadsheet for certain parts of my job and it's a nightmare because if anything gets corrupted um everything's off um so it's it's far it, it's it's making sure all your information is correct real time is great but correct information is another thing that i, I think is is a big challenge okay so in, in terms of that Obviously, we've looked at some of the challenges that we faced, and and Simon, I'll probably come to you first on this. What are the, in your experience, and and, and feel free to reference any any sort of case studies you've got. Yeah. What what are effective methods of, of tracking inventory? Where where have you seen this done well? Um, so we've we've seen done well and done really badly. We've gone from you know we've we've Perfect. seen people that have you know would sell thousands of items on Amazon and just rely on Amazon to deal with their stock, which is kind of great if you're just using Amazon, but then they've just gone, right, we think it's worth this much. I just shoved the figure on their accounts, which was completely wrong. Uh, or we've seen the other way, and they've had a great system that does, you know, it will have all of their products in, they're posting them to all their, their um, various storefronts, but then they're not syncing it to the accounting platform. So they've got, they're almost there. Um, I think the, the best one, we, we used to have a pet store, they they sold on Amazon sort of ten thousand items more than you know a month. Yeah, they they never had a stock system, and their previous accountant just put in a figure on the balance sheet. Wow, this guy yeah. had no idea how much money he was making, no idea what items were still sat in Amazon and weren't selling. He was just buying as much as he could to hope that it would sell. Almost um, sort of guess guessing every month. You're guessing and constant new products, but yet the old products were still, if they weren't sold for the, for whatever, you know, it might have been a dog frisbee, for instance. If they weren't selling, they were just sat in an Amazon warehouse just gathering dust and costing that, him. That That's it and hidden in Amazon fees. Yep, exactly. So, you know, that's that's the worst of it. The best the best of ways we've seen you know we do a lot of integration work and we help people when they're first setting up and you know it might especially when they're very small and that they don't necessarily i know we're obviously talking about stock systems but when they're very small they don't necessarily need a full-blown stock yeah. system but utilize 
the stock systems in like a Zero, a QuickBooks, a Sage, just to give you a bare minimum of cost of sales and profit. That's like, you know, when you're starting out, that's perfect. But as you grow, that's one of the systems that you should be looking to invest in as well, really. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and, and Dave, same, same for you. I know you've got some big, you, you've got some very chunky experience over over an island. Yeah. Um. Actually, do, do you know it's something I heard on a podcast this 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 year? Um. Because because every everyone when they're looking at an inventory system, something managed or stock integrate, get everything together, they're all looking at tracking the product going out to um the customer. So if you're getting your product in, you're selling it out. I need to know what 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 I actually heard with great podcast. I can't actually remember it now, but they they said that when when going into new sites, when implementing new systems, they focus on the goods inside. Um, they, they most clients you go into, and you Simon, you probably see this too. Most most clients you go into, they've got their goods out. Everything going out, ninety nine percent of that's probably tracked. They know what they're they know yep. when a top product is sold, uh, but then like that when goods come in, it's just thrown in a shelf, thrown somewhere on 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 the back of a warehouse, hidden away. And and, and any good system will give you reports to show you that. But if, if you can get your goods in done, if you can get your guys to allocate time to properly scan the goods in, properly put it up, uh, you'll you'll notice a massive jump in your stock control. You 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 might be already at fifty percent stock control, you go up to 70, 80 percent very easily by that by just enforcing um workflows in goods in and like some some of the guys i've consulted on they're like that their issue was always the goods in they, they knew where the stock was and knew it went out but it would take them twice as long to book goods in as it should so they would be always working on uh getting that down and like i've i've, I've consulted with guys who are looking at trying to get rfid tags into their products now these are larger furniture products but so that the goods in process will be quite faster and quicker and more accurate um so 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 from from that like like looking at getting that goods in right just the rest of it flows along because everyone is focused on selling the product yeah um the other yeah, thing that's, 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 that's what my focus would be on the sort of managing the stuff going out because you want to obviously you want to keep your customers happy yeah but, but, but I, all that is focused on like near, near any system now any good system even any average system and guys implementing focus on going out because get that better, get the stock quicker to your clients, get the get know when you have the product. But if you're not booking it in, how do you know when you have the product? How do you know? Because most places have have that flying on it now. Yeah, I, mean, you know, I was at a client a few weeks ago. They're an IT company, and we sat in the office and we were like, oh yeah, you know they they do software, they do hardware. And I was like, oh, what's in that room? I went, oh yeah, hardware we sell. I was like, well, where where's your stock on your accounts? And they had you know thousands of pounds worth of servers just for projects they hadn't started yet and i was like well that is in your stock because you've still got it and yep. it was even just like under getting the team to under the finance team to understand that that the is the tied up cost in that yeah you know, the room was great it was you know it was all secured and everyone checked everything in and checked everything out but then they'd never actually tracked the value of it anywhere it was very much oh well it's for a project it even whether it it doesn't belong to us it belongs to the customer but it wasn't at the customer it was in their office still it was trying to get them to understand that as well. It probably hadn't been billed out yet. It was probably no. still, st yeah, still hadn't been charged for. I, I think this is, and this is, this is an issue I think with most businesses. But it, 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 it's almost you've got to your point, you know, Dave, about checking products in and, mm. and so from the finance point of view. Often, I think what I've seen, and it isn't just an inventory thing. It's whenever you you implemented a system within a business, is that certain depart departments have different agendas for implementing yeah. a, a product. So if I'm the warehouse manager. I want to keep a handle on what's in there. If I'm the finance director, I want to know the value of that and um, things like depreciation and all that kind of stuff that's going on. And, and actually, what where I've seen this work really well in terms of projects, and, and it's the same for implementing any tool, whether it's CRM or inventory, is that all of the departments have a say when you do the scoping. So yeah. I think I think when you set out and, and before you even get to tech, and we'll come on to tech in a minute, but before you even get come on to the sort of technology section, it's okay. What do we need to deal with in terms of physical products, stock? What do we need to deal with? Because I think we've, you know, we've had conversations around a few, you know, projects that that we've worked on, or where you've got a a physical product element and you've also got a service element, and actually tracking those together is really important. And, and actually understanding, okay, this product's gone out with this field engineer for this job. Um, that means we now have to reorder that and, and and all those kind of things. So you you might even have four or five different 
departments of a, of a bigger business all looking at the same physical product in different ways. And often you'll get someone at the, the company that will lead a project. And if that's the finance director, they look at it from a finance perspective. If that's a logistics director, they look at it from that perspective. And I think that is the biggest challenge of documenting any system is having that sort of just taking a little bit of time back first, mapping up the process, sharing it with people and, and bringing on the stakeholders. From a you know, from my perspective, having sold software for, for many, many years, that's really frustrating, right? Because the more the more stakeholders you get involved in the buying phase, this slows things down. But what it does do is when you implement things, it actually it actually speeds up the implementation and it means that people actually use use a system and then an, a software product. So I think just taking that bit of time at the beginning, and I'm probably making my own life harder here by sharing this message, but that scoping phase so important. No, yeah, I, we, I, we do it as well. You know, when we're doing the you know big ERP systems and things like that, like it's less so obvious at like the zero QuickBooks end because you you know that sort of thing. But when we're doing like the big you know, the ERP solutions, and you say right, we've got our high level scope, and you go, oh, we want these reporting, or we want this stock module, or we've got POs and you know, when we go through those bits, we bring the relevant people into those sections to say, right, how do you do it at the moment? What do you want? What's your end goal? So we're bringing all the teams together because otherwise, as you said, you'll get a product at the end. And I've, you know, I've got one at the moment where the finance team are working great, but all the approvals for purchases are done via email rather than in the product. And it's because that team wasn't bought into the, the project at that point. So now we're going back and educating you know, that team to say, look, this is more efficient. Why get rid of all the emails? And it's the same with a stock system and reporting and all of that. Training is training is important. I think there's there's two sort of aspects to training. One is, and again, I've seen this with systems and 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 software. You implement a new system, you train the people that are involved in the sort of first wave of the project on it. Great. Um, the system evolves. You don't upgrade, update the training. New people join the team. You don't upgrade, update the training. So I think that this is the thing about it. For me, the best systems are the ones that are constantly reviewed and the team are trained on. So it doesn't actually, regardless of what the system actually is, and there's lots of ways you can approach inventory management, as we all know, provided you're look, reviewing it and seeing, does it work for all of our all, all of our teams and updating those teams, it, it'll be effective. You can have the best system in the world, but if it sort of sits there frozen in time and then the team that actually implemented it have all left because, you know, we, we all, you know, we all work in businesses. People move around roles quite, you know, every, every couple of years. Um, I, I've seen it. I've seen um, a, a few from an accountancy firm point of view where they've got a sort of suite of products there and the team that implemented it 10, 15 years ago, there may be one or two of a team of 20 left. So they, all that expertise is gone and the system is is fine. The, the software is fine, but the training has been missed. So I think that's one of the things I, I, would, I would say. I saw that, Dal, a lot too as well when I was doing consultancy on some ERP systems. It's like, the system was perfectly fine. It was it would work for them, but they hadn't changed their workflow or updated it in any way in five or ten years. But everyone, everyone who was working in, on the ground had changed what they were doing, um, and bringing in new staff. You'd be like, you, you'd be sitting there doing training, and the guys would be like, okay, so the documentation says to do this, but what we really do, and you kind of think, well, let's update the documentation. Let's let's change that. You're you're actual software works perfectly fine. You don't need to go spend 10, 20,000, 20 million on a new system. Just update your workflows. Um, because, and and that's the same, probably, as, yeah, same as stock systems. Like, I think the yeah. biggest thing any change in any system is not just replicate what you do at the moment. Right? Yeah. Don't just pick up what you do at the moment and put it in a new platform. You've not done, you've not changed anything. You've just spent some money. Yeah. Get, get people happy because you spent money. <laughs> yeah. You've been allocated the budget to put a new system in, but you've just yeah. picked up your and, existing processes and moved them somewhere else, and you're still going to have the same problems. And but, and 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 that's harder. Actually changing the workflows and changing the attitude in in, in companies is is harder. And yep. people just want to put in a new system. Oh, a new system will solve all our problems. Um, and then you just reconfigure it to work your your way, and the same problems are there, but masked away in a new system. So on that note, look, just sort of two sort of perspectives here from both of you in terms of assistance. I know you've got a broader look outlook than that, but 
Simon, if I look at you, if you're running a finance department and a business that's managing stock, what, what do you need to get from that system? So the, 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 the webinar today is about best practices for streamlining stock management. If you're looking at it from a finance lens, what would you be looking for? Live information being posted from the moment someone buys something or it leaves, however you're dealing with your stock value, the moment someone buys it, it's going straight into my finance system. That's what, it, whether it's a summary every single day, depending on number of like transactions, a summary, day, a daily summary of, right, this is how much we sold, that was the cost of it, post it in my finance system. That's what I would be looking for from a finance team. Yeah, makes sense. And and David, from, a, from an operational point of view, what are you? Um, what, what are the key two or three bits you, you, that are essentials, non-negotiables for you? Again, alive. Um, so and, and and not just the sales and the goods in, but adjustments, weight, stock wastage. Uh, if you're doing bin, if you're a bigger location, do bin locations, even the movements of the products through bin locations and everything. Um, so that if anyone, when they look at the system, if it says that you got. 20 cans of coke in bin seven if he walks at bin seven it has 20 cans of coke um so it, it, it's 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 all it's almost the same thing we you just need to keep it live even within 15 to 20 minutes it, it, it needs to be a little bit more live when it's the inventory side um especially if you're running e-commerce stores um that 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 is it nearly live and and Today, with the with the hardware and the technology you have, there's no e reason why you can't be using an Android device to scan the goods while you're actually moving them. It adds an extra couple of seconds onto your actual job. Um, definitely a lot quicker than writing it in a piece of paper and bringing it up to the office for someone else to manually post it. For 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 me, for me, it's always make sure everything is live. Make sure everything is 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 and live, and that there's a workflow that if I come in and I drop my can of coke and a bus and goes everywhere. I know what I need to do to take that off the system and uh, have that procedure ready to go. So, so live and accurate, I suppose, and, and easy to mm -hmm. easy to update. That, that's yeah. what you're looking for. It's simple, that, that's the simplest thing. And, and being able to, to share that, across the that, that That's the word, Andrew, simplicity. So, that's it. That's, that's yeah. what I am always looking for when we're going into places. It's how can we make it simpler? And even when we're... Uh, updating Turbo, like we we will look back on on parts and go right. Well, why is that three clicks? We can bring that down to two clicks and make it a little bit more easier for the end user. I think I think though, I mean, again, worked the software for a while myself. Um, simple is hard. I think to make things simple is quite complicated. <laughs> and and um, often you know the end users of a, of a of a system or a product, you need to make it as user friendly as possible, so it's easy yeah. to update. And you mentioned things like mobile apps. I think you know, making it easy for the team to follow. I, I've I've seen some, um, and I've probably been responsible in, internally for systems where I've looked at what reporting data do I need to get out of it, and then I've created a system which requires so much information in that people just don't don't follow it at all, right? And that that doesn't work because you're thinking too much about well, I'd like every single piece of data captured, which you of course you do, but realistically, the more data you ask people for. The less compliance you tend to get, so I think it's focusing on what is actually really important here. What am I asking my warehouse team to update? Because if it if it becomes too onerous on the team, then you'll see you'll see the kind of hygiene of a system fall fall by as well. So I think it's looking at those key bits. Um, more data the better. And automating is is another thing. Which make, is, yeah, said so making it simple as well. Like if you've got your products in a stock system, don't duplicate your products in your accounting system. Like don't start doing things twice as well. Just like you know, if you've got your daily feed or whatever it might be, like you just need those because if you want the detail behind that, use your stock system for those reports. Don't du don't duplicate stuff, which the, we tend to see a lot of. It's like great, we've got a stock system, right? It comes out in Excel. We then import into our accounting system with exactly the same information. And, and that, it doesn't achieve anything. No, that that that's something we 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 recommend too as well in 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 bigger cloud and turbo. It's like let 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 it track your nuts and bolts and then when you're when it's posting the information across to whichever accounts package you're using just send that across at a nominal level like let's yeah. be honest and, and simon you know this the accountant doesn't care it's a thousand bolts he doesn't care it's a thousand screws it's just that it's 200 euro into stock and especially when you're selling lots if you've got lots of high volume low value mm. you know especially at the smaller end of those accounting platforms you can only have so many transactions before they start to you know there's, there is a limit to those um, yeah. before you start running reports and you just goes, 
Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 20 minutes just running the standard sales report. <laughs> exactly. Or running a VAT return. You know, we've, we've seen cases of VAT returns not being able to run because there's just so much information there that, you know, didn't need to be in there. Yeah. Just because just because you can capture a piece of data doesn't mean you doesn't should. Mean you need, is, it, if it, is the data relevant to be captured in your finance system? If yeah. it's not, don't yeah. put it in there. Ab- ab- absolutely. It's- and that comes back to your stakeholders thing. In that, obviously, that whole goal of the finance team is to get good reports. Who's looking at those reports and what do they want? So we always work, go start. That's where we start our projects from, right? What reporting do you want yeah. from your finance team? And yes, yeah. it might mean we need to do a report at the top that has stock and the finance or various different elements, but that's always start from there and work backwards. I think that's that's good advice for, for any, any any process to look at what the outcome is. is and- yeah. So we, we've kind of looked at, you know, we want something which is real time, accurate, simple, and, and those pr- and easy to engage with, right? They're, they're the thing in terms of the inventory management uh, system, software, you want you want that to be implemented. We've looked at that. That's what the sort of state, the state of the world now. Um, Dave, I know you, a, AI is something that we, we'll, we'll cover, you know, is, is that a bit of a hobby horse yours um, for various reasons, but um, the future, right? So we, we've already seen the speed of, of how people deal with physical products is sped up because everything's been digitized. What are we seeing as being the so then what's the next three to five years look like if we if we had a crystal ball in terms well, of I, I I just want to say I'm I might dislike AI, but I'm not against AI. <laughs> uh, like this, like for, for, for a lot of the smaller clients, like they 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 have so much more wins to automate stuff before trying to implement AI. I mean like if if you're manually posting stuff three times AI is not going to fix that issue for you. I I was talking with a with a with a client and um they they if the conversation very much was from that they um were they wanted to be in the AI bubble because they were looking to get some stuff in AI implemented and I was going all right okay, but you can just click these buttons here on this screen to get that information. But now you want us to go and have have the users type in these questions. They'll take two or three minutes longer to get the answer when it's right there. So, so yes, I, I'm, I'm against AI, but mainly because it's been implemented incorrectly in, in not only account software, but inventory software and stuff when automation will fix the problem 99% of the time. Yeah. yeah. I remember where I think it was me and you, Andrew, were sat in a demo of someone demoing an AI product. And the answer was behind the AI, AI pop-up window to the question they asked at AI. <laughs> and we were both sat there like, why would we just click on the button? But I think it's because everyone's just trying to shoehorn some sort of AI into their platform yeah. as a more visual thing of, oh, we've got AI when actually it's probably been in there in you know predictive text and all that. We've been using it for yeah. years. It's Suggested just purchase AI. orders, all that. Yeah. It's um so yes, there's there is a good use of AI, but as David said, it's automation first, AI to look at the data you're and it's more um generative AI, I think it's more useful than just plastering an AI badge on it for your side. Because then I, it's not looking at that sort of thing. I think I had this couple of months with one of my daughters about you know the, the, what the future looks like generally. And I think in terms of AI, things like algorithms have also have been called AI for a little while, right? And people have sort of badged an algorithm as AI, which it isn't, it's just looking at it. But if we look at you know, generative AI and looking at using that pre- for predictive analysis and, and, and just breaking down numbers, that relies on good data. And, and actually the, the skill I think with, with AI, and the same for imagery management, if you don't ask it the right questions, you won't get the value out of it. And I think that's increasing the challenges is thinking about, and going back to the point about what data should we be collecting why are we collecting it? What questions do we want answered by AI? Um, I, I, I'm, you know, forecasting tools, but and Simon, you know this, forecasting tools were sort of sprung up and, and there are some great ones out there. Some of them were no more powerful than a, an Excel spreadsheet. All they were doing was sort of extrapolating forward. That's not AI really. That's just using a, for, a formula, right, to, to take things forward. Gen, you know, genuine AI is looking at multiple factors, et cetera, et cetera. So I think there's definitely space for AI and we'll see it particularly as, businesses increasingly use digital platforms to sell their products, then you can, you, know, you see it, like Amazon's, you know, you might also like this and things like that. That's probably more of an algorithm than a, than AI, but that will be bad as, as AI, I think. I think the best, the best use case I've seen of it so far was for a coffee shop 
Okay. And they had some, you know, they obviously need to get their stock in to make various types of coffee, you know, your hot coffees, your cold coffees, your whatever other coffee. There's about a million different types. But they had done something really interesting around on their like stock dashboards that some company had built with AI that looked at the trends in the weather. And they okay. were predicting to say, well, in two weeks' time, we've bolted it into whatever weather database it was. Yeah. We know there's going to be a heat wave. Therefore, we need to buy this much more ice. Yeah. Or we don't actually need as much milk or we need more milk. You know, we need our more ice cream. They were using it that way and using weather AI to predict, to then push what stock they needed to get. And, and that that's that's like, that's the ideal use that, of, that's of, the of ideal AI. Use. Because like you'll 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 have guys like we we had spoken about seasonal products before this, you'll have you'll have people who are setting up their seasonal products be, and because they don't want their algorithm, we'll just use algorithm for it to 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 suggest that I have to buy ice ice cream in the depth of winter because I sold a good in summer, um. But then at the same time, you still have to know the weather because you might have had a bad summer last year, um, and you can't you'd be using your your suggested purchasing to tell you how much ice cream you need to buy for this year because of that. So if you're not if like that like that coffee cup company was the ideal thing, but if you're not including that in your in your AI model and 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 even your your suggested ordering, if you're not taking that into account, then it's just bad data and, and bad data leads leads to bad decisions. T totally agree. Totally agree. Um okay so I think we've we've sort of just ticked over half an hour. We've got a little bit of time and we've got quite a few attendees on you. So um, it would be great if we can get some some questions fired away from any of the participants. If not, we can, I'm sure we can find some. We can we can make some stuff up based on our own sort of case experience. But it would be brilliant if anybody's got a particular question they want answered. You've got two experts on inventory management here. If there are any questions you want answered, either pop them in the chat or in the Q and A, and we'll pick them up now. So feel free. I, I, I won't call your name out. I promise. Just looking for the questions. While while we're waiting for the questions, I, I actually read a, a, a very good article um uh, last night preparing for this about predictive picking. So not not even just predictive ordering anymore. Now they 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 there's companies out there that are going to start um doing predictive picking as the future, where based on previous historical trends, they'll start moving stock. And it's actually not even historical trends, but marketing campaigns they're putting out there and and different things happening throughout the globe that they'll start moving stock forward in their warehouses ready for it to be picked, almost grouping it together where they expect the orders to come in for it, which I'm very excited to see. And that's something with, you know, as we, yes, we're just chatting more questions, like some of the things we're seeing at the, the final, like you've got a company like Intuit, right? They've got QuickBooks, they have, they own Credit Karma, they own MailChimp, and all of a sudden now they're bringing all of those things together so you can go, right, I've sold this product to this customer. Right, we sold it in June. Right, next June, here we go. Here's our AI model that's already built your marketing campaign to then go and sell this product again to this client. Oh, plus all of the other clients that are in that same industry as that person. That's, and it's bringing that's it together. Exactly awesome. That's the sort of thing that they're able to do. From yeah. both, you know, they've got the stock information. They've got They've also checked the credit references of all of those customers as well <laughs> to make sure they, you know, they're decent customers. And then they've written because they know that business owners aren't you know not every business owner has a degree in marketing or even knows the first thing about best place to go to market so it's giving you an idea of this is a template of what you can then send out to your clients using a using that generative ai and and, and, and it's, it's, more, sorry andrew sorry. and uh, so i was just gonna say and more importantly it makes you proactive instead of reactive for it like exactly do this now and you'll get some sales and, and that that's a big thing moving from pro reactive to proactive in a, in a system is a major thing i think it's, it's also some augmenting human intelligence right because we're all quite you know, humans are pretty intelligent and it's just that i think the advantage of things like ai is that you can process more data quickly you know humans can make great decisions if you give humans data there are lots of clever people who can make great decisions. I think it's when you get to multiple data points, and this comes back to the point around inventory and the chain and the challenges at the start. When you've got so many data points, it's actually difficult to keep across. You know, to your point, Simon, it's actually difficult to keep across four or five systems with lots of data. It's almost impossible for one human being or even a team of human beings to process that quickly enough to implement changes quickly enough so you can see the results. So, I think I think that's the joys of having a really slick system when it comes to inventory management is. If you've got the data there, 
you can use other technology to augment your decision making to, to, to save your business money. You know, the dead inventory piece, no one wants lots of inventory tied up on, on a shelf. Or if you've ordered a lot of products that don't don't sell, you can learn from that. Whereas historically, those, those errors may have been hidden away and you can't make the changes quickly enough. So, yeah, I, I think that's, that's it's definitely... Not, it's not just those things. It's also, you know, that review feedback is, you know, I've dealt with a lot of companies in the past where you ordered and you said, right, we're going to ship it out in 48 hours. And yeah. it doesn't ship or, and then they say, oh, actually, we haven't got it in stock. Well, that's looks bad on them. Then, then that customer that you could have had as a repeat customer is never going to come back to you because they've had that bad experience. I. I, I actually my my water bottle there it's um it's it's ocean bottle giving them a little uh, uh bump on the on, on this but that 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 happened to me I I bought one of their coffee cups they sent me an email confirming I would have it um within within three weeks four weeks later nothing I had to start chasing up with them and uh, the the usual uh, oh we're 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 switching our three PLs or we we and then did it was we don't have stock. Yep. Um, they ended up having to send me a couple of different free items as well to 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 make me happy, but they didn't do they didn't do anything really until because because I had actually forgotten about it. It was when they sent me the um, how are you enjoying your cup? Can you give us a review? I was like, well, I haven't got it. So they their so their review software wasn't even connected to their to their to their delivery software because. Eesh, that, that's the big thing. Don't send someone a review if you haven't dispatched their order yet. <laughs> make, yeah, make makes sense. I'm not intelligent. Yeah. So just just conscious guys that we we we've not had any questions. So obviously you've dealt with everything because I'm 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 unsurprised that because you've got so much expertise. But one of the things I, I was going to say is you know for those that have joined, we will we, record this anyway so we can share this webinar afterwards. If anybody does have a question or an issue they want to do want to speak to you about um, personally, what's the, where's, how's the, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, best place to reach me is via LinkedIn. Uh, just search my name on LinkedIn um, and you'll see me as um, Software Advisory Manager at Mall Kings and Smith. Perfect. Dave, same for you? LinkedIn as well, or if you want to email me on djoyce at bigredcloud.com. Perfect. Right, and same me if, if you want to, I'm sure no one, no one wants to speak to me, they want to speak to experts, but if you want to contact me, LinkedIn is probably the best place for me because that's what I check regularly. Um Thank you both. I think I was really informative. I think just to just a recap, really, if we're looking at the, so inventory control, simplicity, engage with the team, accuracy, real time, all of those things. But I think the, the initial starting point is make sure you map out what you're currently doing. Simon, your point about not just implementing a new bit of te technology without kind of thinking about it first and thinking that would solve your problems. That's another message. I'm sure you know we've got still got 16 people left on the call. I'm sure you've all got your your own so specific challenges around inventory. Every business is different. And I think the eye opener for me, having been involved in this for coming up to eight months now with, in terms of inventory specifically, it is a big area. Different sectors have different challenges and different sizes of businesses have different challenges. So if you do have any questions, please do reach out. The whole point of this webinar is to kind of to help. And hopefully we've done that today. Um, Simon, David, thank and, you very and, much and, for your time. And also just before we pop off guys, for, for, for the people left on the call, I do recommend over the next couple of days to take a look at your goods in process. Um, you, I bet you will be able to find improvements. And if you can't, reach out to me because I'd love to hear about how, how you're doing it perfectly. Perfect. Every day is a school day. day so we'll, we'll take it on Absolutely. Um, thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Um, hope that was useful. Any feedback you've got, you know, please do let us know. If there are any other topics you want us to cover in a bit more detail, we can, we can, I'm sure we can set something else up. But Apart from that, go and enjoy what is left of your lunch hour and back to work, I'm sure, at two o'clock. Perfect. Thanks, Thanks all. guys. Thanks all. Bye.